If a 20-year-old went to jail 22 years ago, they come out today at 42 years old. In 1994, there were no metro cards, no internet, not many cell phones. <coughs> when they get left with their metro card after they get released from prison, they're on their own. As Congress people, what would you do to help bridge that gap from being incarcerated to being free? And what would you do in terms of housing for these individuals who, in so many cases, especially in New York, may not be able to go back to where their families are because they cannot move into public housing because of their criminal records? How would you deal with these issues? Let's start with Adam Clayton Powell. Great, again, going back to the ban the box movement, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, this, consider, this is a consideration of the uh, applicants, the job applicants' previous uh, uh, incarceration record. And it, it, it puts a stigma on the criminal record of the applicant before they even walk in through the door. Uh, it delays the background checks. Um, it, de it delays the ability to speak to the person uh, uh, later. So I think we need to have that movement uh, reach the federal level. and give the person a second chance. Oftentimes these people are branded for life and uh, they have nowhere to go uh, as far as uh, uh, housing. NYCHA has very strict rules regarding formerly uh, uh, convicted people. Uh, they have to go to these, uh, uh, you, know, third, uh, you know, third level housing and, and homeless shelters really, unless they have a family member in, in a private uh, apartment. So these are very difficult questions for the federal government to answer, but we have to be creative. Uh, NYCHA, for example, I understand, you know, not allowing a big-time drug dealer back into NYCHA, but they have some extremely strict regulations. And, you know, you have people that are convicted of violations. <coughs> violations is not even a crime. Violations are like 240-20, disorderly conduct, public urination, as, as bad as that may be. And NYCHA actually bans people uh, with this a violation, which is not even a crime. So we need to revisit some of these regulations and we need to again give uh, uh, these people a second chance because right now we are branding them for life. They cannot get a job and, uh, and it creates a vicious cycle for the 65 million who are felony, uh, 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 who have felony records, not to speak of the millions of others who have uh, misdemeanor records. Assembly member Linares, how would you deal with reentry and, and, and housing? So last week I, I attended a funeral of a young man, 16 year old, uh, that was killed by another young man in his hall. Uh, and uh, he was just coming out of the program that I uh, mentioned to you. He had just been seen by Exodus. And uh, it's, it's a type of uh, violence that we see so pervasive uh, within our youth and within our community. And, um, you know, you, you saw a family in grief, uh, having lost a young one. Uh, I, I believe that the crisis that we're talking about is so deep-rooted and challenging that I think we need to really, if we're going to look at funding coming from the federal level or from the private sector or from the state and city combined. I think this crisis needs to be addressed with all three levels of government. But from the federal level in this particular case, I would uh, look to frame the approach of addressing the challenges that uh, those who are incarcerated, before they land in the community, there has to be a plan there has to be steps taken with them, but I would engage families, I would engage institutions in the neighborhood, so that when they come out, they know that they're not alone. And it, it, never mind getting a house. How about a job? I think we need to also be able to prepare uh, for the challenges that this population, of all the challenges that we have with individuals, this is probably the most challenging one. 
And I would look for a program that the community have ownership of. No, no one else, but the community should have ownership. And let's bring the humanity to this individual. Let's give the support that they need to have from the family and from the community where they're coming back to. Thank you. Um, Mr. Gallagher. I would say that the issue is not just New York, right? This is a national issue. This is something that happens in every community, in every big city, in every part of the country. What are the biggest cities in the United States? It's Denver, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix. All these places have the same problem. So we need to seek solutions among congressional representatives and some other people around the country to band together just like that crime bill. When we talked about what that crime bill was lacking, it was lacking consideration of these facts. Let's just make pretend you're gonna, you're gonna just lock these people up. They're gonna get out at some point. This is where we're at. We're faced with a challenge that everyone has. So my answer is about using the resources of the government and convincing the same legislators that are facing the same issues in other parts of the country that we need to do the right thing for the people that we represent, which is job training and placement it's counseling, substance abuse, and mental health counseling when they come out, and recognizing that they have to have a place to live. What is the, I mean, does anyone not have a right to live in a house? I mean, what are we gonna do with them? We're just gonna wander the streets? It's, it's crazy, and it's not just us. It's everywhere. So that is, the, that is the, the, the answer I have for you, which is that we need to seek other representatives around the country who recognize these same facts and make the difference happen and make it happen using the resources of the federal government, which in our case in New York, as I started to say before, we pay a dollar in taxes and get 90 cents maybe. You live in South Carolina and get a dollar in taxes, you get like $6 back in services. Some of that's the defense budget, that's a whole other can, you know, kettle of fish. But we need, New York is the third largest economy in the United States and we're not getting the federal government to pay its bills to us, and they're due. So I would say that it's, it's about those things. It's trying to craft legislation along the lines of the crime bill, only about post-crime. It's re-entry. What, what are we going to do for people? Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. And now we will have Clyde Williams. So what will you do about re-entry and about housing for those that are coming back into the communities? Well, I've already done certain things. Um, I used to be on the board of an organization, organization in Albadio, East Harlem, called Strive which is an organization that deals with some of the most at-risk people in our society and ex-offenders. Um, not only when I was on the board did I work with them, um, I actually got the president and the CEO at the time invited to a roundtable discussion at the White House with President Obama on workforce development. I also introduced them to people at the Labor Department for them to get additional fundings for programs to deal with ex-offenders and other people, as I said, at risk. And there is money right now within the, the federal government that we can go after, as I said, grant money, there's money at the Department of Health and Human Services that's sitting there, again, for mental illness, they're sitting there for substance abuse, they're sitting there for people that are homeless. Again, we have to have somebody who knows that money's there, who can go after that money and bring this money back to our community. The resources exist, we're just not bringing them back. And what I'm telling you is, I have the ability to do it, the knowledge to do it, and the, the forethought to actually figure out how it needs to get done because I've done it in the past. Um, Ambassador Susan Johnson Cook. Thank you for the question. You know, what we have to be careful of is not making these promises like the day we arrive, we're going to deliver all of these things, we're going to bring a tablet, we're going to bring a smartphone, we're going to do all this. When we get to Washington, Washington is about relationships, who you know, who you can access, who you can pick up the phone, and who you can partner with, who you can build coalitions with, who you can build bridges with. I am the one who knows those relationships. Reentry is already being worked on with the Department of Justice. I was with Loretta, Attorney General Loretta Rent, and they are actually having like a Big Brother program so that as men particularly are being released, they are mentored by someone who does counseling, helps them with housing, helps them with reentry into their community, helps them with all the things that they need to be a full-blown citizen. And it's over time. One administration is not going to be able to handle all of the issues. It's going to take several administrations. It's going to take several elections. We only have two years in Congress if we win. But in, ter in terms of it, 
I've worked with HUD with the faith-based initiatives, and there's housing that can be done partnering with the faith-based community. We should not overlook this wonderful resource of our moms, our clergy, our rabbis who can work together. B'nai B'rith gets grants, the Catholic Church gets grants. We look at Brooklyn, the Nehemiah Project, where they built homes, the church with government building homes. So it's wonderful to talk about what you've done on the local level. It's, talk, it's wonderful to, to what you talk about, what you're dreaming about doing, and what you're going to deliver. We got to be real. When we get to Washington, you got to partner with people who are already doing it. The federal government is working. Department of Justice, I would work with them and then expand our network to the faith community. How can we do it together? And last but not least, Assemblyman Keith Wright. Yes, thank you so much for the question. What you're talking about, you have to remember that this country was founded, the foundation of it is slavery. This country was built by cheap labor or, or, or no cost labor. And, and, and Dostoevsky says in his book, Crime and Punishment, if you want to look at a society, look at its prisons. We're in the prisons. So what we're talking about, we have to do a whole fundamental go completely in the opposite direction of what Congress has been doing for years. Now, yeah, this is what I've been doing my whole entire life. I was on the board of the Fortune Society when I was 17 years old. All right, and I'm a legislator who got them to build that building on, on, on Riverside Drive and 140th Street. But, but even, even more so than that, you have to remember that landlords Four out of five landlords do criminal background checks. Mm -hmm. That has to be changed. There's no reason why a criminal record should have to do with whether or not you can pay your rent or not. All right, there's no reason. And in our public housing, uh, uh, in terms of uh, reentry back into our public housing developments, we have to start changing uh, uh, the mindset. And yes, some of it's not law, but I think it's policy that the uh, New York City Public Housing Authority is implementing in terms of. Uh, folks that have uh, served time in prison. So, we certainly, certainly, uh, I, I, in my office each and every day, I have folks coming to me talking about, I can't find an apartment. Yes, I've served time. So we have to make sure that our, we have groups, we, Clyde Williams talked about Stride, great organization that helps with reentry. Uh, the Fortune Society, a great organization that helps with reentry. And we have to bolster these, these organizations to make sure that they can really do their job. Because quite frankly, our prison populations all across this country are, are, are busting at the seams with our folks that have not been trained, that have not been educated, and that have, have no place else to go. So uh, I think it's a great question and something that's not going to be solved overnight. Thank you. Thank you.